Welcome back. This time we're going to add this track work down here. Part of this passing siding and these two sidings right here. And because this is going to require some precision, we're only going to work on this little area here. And then in another video, we'll work out here and we'll work out here. But for right now, we're going to do this. Now, before we get started, we're going to have to add some layers. And the first layer we're going to add we're going to call rulers. So we'll make that seven. And I'm only going to make one layer for that. Then we need to add a layer for our yard. So let's add another layer. And we'll call that 3.5 lower level yard. And we'll arrange all of our layers. Now some of you may notice that in the previous video my layers didn't quite line up. The main headings were all at the top and the sub layers were down at the bottom. That's because I was trying something different and I didn't like it, so I took it out for this drawing. We're going to zoom in a little bit here so we can see what we're working on. And we're going to go to the rulers layer. And we're going to add some rulers. Here's one. And we're going to make this ruler two inches. And we're going to make the line width three eighths, so it's easy to see. And then we're going to make its color red, make it nice and bright. And now we're going to add another one. So let's select this guy. We're going to copy him. Then we're going to paste him in. We'll select him, come up here, and we're just going to change his length to two and a half inches. And the reason I'm putting these in is because I need these for my track spacing. My mainline track spacing is two inches, my yard and industrial, things like that, is going to be two and a half inches. So now we have some rulers here that we can use. Let's get them down here. Now one of the things that uh, we may be using while doing this drawing is the pre-built entities drawing. I've shown you that before, but I'm going to bring it up again real fast here. And this is my pre-built entities. And as you can see, I have various ladder tracks laid out. I also have passing sidings laid out for two inch and two and a half inch spacing. I also have some crossovers here using number six switches on two inch and two and a half inch spacing. And then I have a bunch of rulers here. So if I needed a ruler quickly, I could always just go and grab it from this drawing because I keep this drawing open on my other screen. Now I'm gonna do a separate video on pre-built entities and I'll show you the ones that I have made, and, and I'm also going to complain bitterly about something in any real, something you can't do, which would be really, really handy that you could. But anyway, let's get rid of this drawing. So now let's change layers to the lower level yard. Make that our active layer. And now we're going to place our first switch, and that is going to be this guy. And that's going to be a number six right hand. So let's go grab one. And we're going to drag him down here. Now we'll zoom in. We're going to rotate this guy, and we're going to drag him down. Now, this is the only switch I'm going to cheat on. I have another drawing where I worked everything out just to make sure it worked. And this switch is kind of like the keystone for this drawing here. So I want to make sure I've got this one right. And then everything else we lay out will come out okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go look at his endpoint, and I'm going to copy these measurements from the other drawing. So stand by. Okay, now I have this switch exactly where I want it. So we're going to come over here, and now we're going to place in this track here, because we're also going to be building off of this track. So let's go grab a piece of flex. I'm going to bring them down, and we're going to connect them. And you'll notice it lines up pretty good over there, and pretty good over here. Now, we need to place this track, and we want to do it on two inch centers because, like I said, the main line is going to be on two inch centers for track spacing. So we'll select him, say add parallel flex, come up here, put it two, below, and there we go. And you'll notice that it sort of starts to get off here. But it all works out in the end. I don't know if this is a problem with the original drawing or the way it was scanned. But the important thing is that our track is straight and doing what we want it to do. So we're not going to worry about this. Okay, now let's take this piece of track 
and we're going to pull him up, hold down the shift key so we go straight. And we're going to place this switch here. And this is a number six left. Now we want him to be at the same angle as this piece of track. Now I can look at this end and add 180 degrees to this number up here. So it would be 281.4 degrees. Or if I don't want to do that, I can come over here and I can look at this end and get that angle. Now I'm going to copy that. Come back down here. And I'm going to paste that in. You notice we got real close on that. Hit enter. Now we've rotated into place. So now we're going to do some more copying and pasting. This is how you get things lined up. We're going to come down here and we're going to look at this one's, this piece over here. We're going to look at his endpoint. Now we want to see what his Y value is. His Y value is 127, 19, 30 seconds. So copy that. Then come over here and paste in that value into the Y. Hit enter. And you know, it still looks like it's off and I don't know why it just does that. I'm working in 164. That's something I forgot to tell you at the beginning. Settings. We are now working in 164th of an inch because we have to get these pieces pretty precisely aligned. All right, let's go back here. Let's look at this guy. And see, it, he seems to be off. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to move him up. And when you hold down the shift key and use your arrow keys, you're moving 164th of an inch. Uh, it looks about, it's right in the middle of that. So let's offset it that way. Zoom back out. Now we're going to do some alignment here. I'm going to turn off my image and I'm going to go to center line. I'm going to grab this guy using the shift key, pull him straight down. Now we'll zoom in. Let's lose this. Let's get a little more drawing space here. So we want to get this line on that line. So we're going to move him to the left. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go look at that. Let's move it down just a tiny bit. Now let's go back, look over here. We still want to move him a little bit to the left. Do something like that. All right. We look good here. And I think we look good at the other end over here. Now we can test that by grabbing our track, connecting it, and looking at it. We've got a 14,012 inch radius curve on that. So I don't think you're going to detect that with the naked eye. Now we have to put in our short connecting piece here. So we're going to zoom in again. A lot of zooming, a lot of panning when you're doing this. Now we're going to go grab this track. We're going to grab his X value. And his X value is 72 and 27 30 seconds. So write that down. And we're going to grab this one's X value. And that is 72 and 1 8. And what we'll do is we will subtract 72 and 1 8 from 72 and 27 30 seconds. And that will tell us how long this piece of track has to be. And I have a brand new fancy fraction calculator for my iPhone. And it says that space is 23 30 seconds of an inch. Come out here. We're going to grab a piece of flex. Now we need to cut off a piece of this flex. Now here's something I wish any rail had. I wish you had an option to either cut the flex and leave a connection point or another option here that says cut flex without the connection point or something like that. Just as long as you don't have the connection point. Every time you cut a piece of flex, 
you end up with the connection point. And if you want to drag that piece of flex out and use it somewhere else, you always have to come in and delete that connection point. So let's highlight this guy. Let's drag him down. Now we're going to make him a straight piece of flex. And we're going to put in 23 30 seconds. Hit OK. And that's a tiny little piece of track. Now, if it's not selected like that, you can select it two ways. You can draw a box around it, or you can move your mouse very carefully until you see the center get wider. And I'll show you. I'll zoom in. And you'll see it gets a little wider like that. That means you can select it. Because otherwise, you're going to be grabbing it out here, and you're going to be bending it. So I'm going up here. Got it. Now we're going to drag it down here. And I bent it. Okay, so we're going to drag it down here. You got to be careful to, you, that you grab the middle, because otherwise you're going to bend the piece of track. I'm going to bring it down here. I'm going to move this guy over. That see, I moved, I bent it. Now there we go. Then I'm going to move this guy back. Let's zoom out. And let's see what we've got. And that looks pretty good. So now, to check, we can come up here and we can grab our 2-inch ruler, bring it down here, we'll rotate it. And it looks like we are pretty close to a 2-inch center. So that's not too bad. All right, so now we've got this section done. Let's uh, get our layers back. Let's turn on our image. And let's go back to wide track. And here's a cool thing that you can do. You can, when, you put that, when you put that ruler on there, I can select that piece of track, and there's my center line. And I can come down here, and I can select this piece of track. There's my center line. So you can see you're really, really close. Next, we want to add another number six left hand into here so we can get this trackage in. So let's go grab one. And we're going to set his angle to match this one. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab this. And we see it's 91.87. So we're going to copy that. We're going to come over here and paste it and hit enter. And there he rotates into place. Now I could have grabbed this angle and set them to the same. Put this angle in over here. Otherwise, if I grab this one once again, you're going to have to subtract 180 from it. So let's just stick a piece of track on there for the heck of it. Let's cut it first. We'll cut it right there. Delete the connection. Drag that down. That's lining up pretty nicely on there, isn't it? All right, now we're going to zoom in here. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to set the Y value. So this Y value is 127 3 Copy it. And paste. Hit Enter. And now earlier I said they don't always line up. And obviously the reason is they're at a slight angle and they're separated. So ignore what I said earlier. So once again, we need to determine this distance because I think we're happy with this. This is lining up okay and we should be able to curve that track out there. So once again, we need to determine this distance. So this guy is at 85 and 4364, so write that down. This guy is at 84 and 3 16 And I get 1 and 31 64 So we'll zoom out. We'll grab our flex. Grab that piece. We're going to drag him down here. I'm going to move this over just a tiny bit. Pop that.
that on. Pop that on. It's looking pretty good. Let's see how we did on spacing. Probably around two and an eighth, two and a quarter. So that's okay. All right. We'll ignore this for the time being. It's not important. Okay, we're going to end here. And in the next video, we're going to put in these crossovers. And we're ending the video here because when I was editing it originally, I discovered there are several ways you can put these crossovers in. Some are easy and some are not. But I thought I'd take a little bit of time to explain how you can put crossovers in when they're at an angle like this, because it's a little more difficult. Okay, we'll see you in the next video where we will put in these two crossovers, this switch, and a little bit of track right here.